So, today we're going to have a grammar day. Not because I hate you, not because I uh, love grammar, not because I want to upset you, but a mixture of all of those things. So turn to page 181. I know that's uh, Kampong pastimes, but uh, I wanted to I wanted to have a grammar day at us on Monday, especially as it meant doing a load of grammar before I posted it. Before I to go through it. I like to make sure I understand it. I like to uh, review it for myself, just to refresh it, just to remind myself of what goes on, which gives you an idea just how hard grammar is. I'm, a, I'm an English teacher. I am a novelist with 35 years experience. Um, and I still, before I teach this stuff, I want to go back. And I want to remind myself of how it works because it's, it's hard. Uh, grammar is, is not easy. It doesn't come easy to me. Um, maybe especially because I am an English speaker, so I know the rules instinctively. I don't have to think about them. I, I, subject verb agreement, for instance, I know it. I, I don't even have to uh, think about it. If you tell me it wrong, I just know instantly that it's wrong. It just sounds completely incorrect. Um, for that reason, I don't necessarily know all the phrases, the names, all that kind of stuff. So I do appreciate that grammar is difficult. Um, we're going to have a look at two different things today, uh, neither of which are particularly challenging. I think, you'll, uh, I think you'll have no trouble with both of them. So first of all, quick review, quick revision 181. So, <clears throat> verbs and verb phrases. Verb phrases are widely used in explanations to refer to events that happened at various points in time. Um, I actually remember being taught verbs at uh, primary school. A verb is a doing word. They actually made us repeat that over. A verb is an action. Um, a verb tells us what something is doing. Um, for there to be a sentence, there has to be a subject and a verb. <clears throat> I know there has to be a capital letter at the beginning, I know there has to be a period or full stop at the end, but there also has to be a subject and a verb. In other words, for there to be a functional sentence, someone has to be doing something, and the verb is the something. Um, now, not only can we use a verb, we can use a verb phrase get into that. Using verbs and verb phrases will help to make the explanation clear so that readers will understand it more easily. Verbs provide the actions in the sentence. All complete sentences must have a verb, otherwise they're a sentence fragment, which we covered before. Verbs can consist of single words or a group of words. Now they've got some examples. Um, <clears throat> mammoths were uh, long-tusked hairy members of the elephant family. So were is the state of being, was um, being the, uh, the actual thing that it is. So who's doing it? The man. What were they doing? They were being. Um, <clears throat> the monsters were being found in the tundra. So what are we talking about? The monsters. What was happening to them? They were being found <coughs> in the tundra. Uh, verbs um, that are made up of more than one phrases. Uh, a verb phrase can consist of an auxiliary verb and a main verb, for example. Now, those who don't remember, an auxiliary verb is a helper verb. This is from grade 10. Now, I always like to use the example of my motorcycle because I like motorcycles. Um, but it's, it's probably the best example. Now, my motorcycle uh, that, I, that I travel on only a 10-litre petrol tank, although it was the most economic bike you could buy. Um, for a 650, it ran about as much petrol as a 250. Um, now the problem was I had something like two litres in reserve, so I only had about eight litres of functional petrol, and even less than that, um, about half a litre disappears through the pump system, so you don't get to hold a full 10 litres of gas. So I had about 100 miles in range from my seven and a half litre capacity, which is pretty good, but it's not good enough. Um, there was a good chance I was gonna run out. 100 miles is, is a lot. Um, it's a good couple of hours sat on a motorcycle, which is too much for traveling. Um, you, you're going to want a break. Um, so what we would do is I had to fit an external tank. I had to get an extra tank so that I could go even further. Now, because it wasn't my main tank, we call it an auxiliary. So the main tank on my motorcycle was under my seat. I fitted a second one to the front of the bike on the side as an auxiliary. So it was there as a spare. It wasn't my main I wouldn't use it first, but if I ran out of petrol, I always had a spare to rely on. That was my auxiliary. And it's the same thing with verb. Our main verb tells us what we're doing. The auxiliary is a helper verb, which means all it does is support the primary verb. <coughs> so let's have a look at the examples. The man had to rivers. That's not a 
terribly good example. I think a, a better example of a helper verb would be um, he could run. James run, James ran, he could run. Um, it gives us uh, more information about the verb that we uh, but it, I mean, it works, it's just not the best example. Adverbs can separate the auxiliary verb from the main verb. Um, <clears throat> other long extinct animals have also been found. So, have is our auxiliary verb, been found is our um, verb. Uh, also, um, it's neither of those things, it's the word that splits them. Hmm. Compound verbs are joined with and, for example. Uh, Verbs, okay. Uh, there, the carcass would freeze and be preserved. So all of this is one thing. They would freeze and be preserved is one action uh, because freezing allows it to be preserved, and it's been preserved by freezing. So we use the and to bridge the two concepts and make it one concept. Um, some verbs need to be followed by a preposition, so the verb would make sense in the sentence. For example, many of the animals were still standing up. Okay, so standing up. Uh, the preposition is 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 up. Um, standing in what position? Up. I don't think you can have stood in any other position. You can't be standing. Well, I suppose you could stand down um, if you were to arm yourself or uh, uh, back away from a fight. You could stand down. I don't. I don't necessarily think it would apply. Um, many of the animals were. There's our auxiliary. Standing up includes a preposition. Again, I don't think it's the absolutely best example. Um, you how the word, how these things work. So these verb phrases are like any other phrase. They're like any other thing. So if we have more than two, more than one word, two words or more acting together uh, to take the place of a verb, it's a verb phrase. Simple as that. Same with adverbs. Same with nouns. If it's more than two words, it's a phrase that takes on this role. And because we're talking about things that operate as a as a verb, then it's a verb phrase. What I want you to watch the next video, which gives you uh, another explanation of verbs and verb phrases, and it explains it in absolutely terrible detail, but it's only going to make this all much worse. And then I want you to complete a simple quiz. And that's pretty much all we need to do on this today. But before we do, let's have a quick word on uh, technical terms. Now, this is very, very short. I don't want to go into it too much because it's really patently obvious. So, what we're talk through technical terms and then I'll have you go on to uh, the verb phrase and then complete a quiz on the two. So, understanding language. <clears throat> now language is there to be understood, okay, and sometimes it has to be understood on multiple levels and that's what we're talking about here. Technical terms are, and this is page 182, technical terms are words that are used in technical and scientific explanations. They are specific to the topic being discussed and are generally, there are no simpler or easier forms of the word. I don't think, again, I don't think this is the best explanation. Uh, they can be the names of machines, chemicals, processes, instruments, or locations. So to break this down, a technical word is the only way to describe something, and it's in a complex form. So we're, we're describing it using technical words which are complex, which are strictly accurate, which can't be used for anything else. But when we use them, we would normally introduce them with an explanation. So if we were talking about, um, say, motorcycles, and we were going to discuss a part of the motorcycle like the, the induction system. Now, the induction system is what um, moves the petrol and air, mixes it together, and puts it into the engine. Uh, we can't call it anything else. It's not the, the mixer center because it doesn't really mix, it inducts. Uh, the only way to call it, the only word to call it is the induction system. Um, and that's what it's always been called ever since the 1900s when it first started uh, becoming apparent that engines needed to have fuel and air mixed together and be ignited by a system. So, first of all, we talk about the induction system. Um, I'm going to have to explain what it is. What we do when we write about this is we say the induction system. This is what the induction system is, this is what it does. We can't just suddenly drop a technical term like induction system into a piece of text. We have to go in and we have to break it down first and explain why we're talking about it. There is no simpler way of describing an induction system, uh, a carburetor or fuel induction, um, fuel injection. 
there's, there's no better way of, of describing the induction system. So that's the word we have to use, but we have to absolutely make sure that we explain it first. And that's, that's the key to this. Um, technical words are usually uh, defined uh, when they first appear in the text. Look at this uh, sentence from the Frozen Mammoths. Vast areas of the Arctic are covered with ice, but most of the tundra is composed of soil, sand, river silt and loam, uh, bound together by frozen water. Now I have no idea what silt and loam is. Um, and they kind of shot themselves again in the foot. Because look at the technical terms underlined above. Can you tell what they mean? No. And you know why I can't tell you what they mean? Because I haven't explained it. <laughs> Simple as that. The tundra is, I have no idea what a tundra is. I, I do know what a tundra is, but only because I happen to know. Um, <clears throat> it's composed of soil, soil, which is sand, river, silt. I know silt is the, is the fine dirt that comes um, off of a river, but I have no idea what loam is. So basically these things been explained to us in the text first so that when we actually come up with silt and loam we actually know what we're talking about later on in the text and then refer to them as loam uh, as many times as you like because anybody reading this would now be aware of what it is you're talking about so terms are <coughs> terms that are beyond understanding of a lay person now, a lay person you or I that knows nothing about a complex subject such as in this uh, frozen mammoths. This is something scientists. It's not something I would be expected to know. We would be simple terms because there's no other way to describe them. They're complex terms, and they should be fully explained to us so that we can understand them on the same level as the scientists who coined them. Just like if I was talking about the induction system on a motorcycle, or, um, a medical term, or a or a term in uh, writing. It doesn't matter what it is, so long as it's the most commonly used word, there's no simpler way to break it down, and it's fully explained in the text. And normally it would be beyond the understanding of a normal person, and we would have to explain it, and we would expect to explain it properly. It's annoying that they haven't done that here, and then used that as an example, typical of this book. Now there are sections, uh, tell us section 6.4 in your activity book, 6.5, to explore um, explanations and technical terms. <coughs> you can certainly do that if you feel you need to. I encourage you to. Uh, but we're going to move back to um, verbs now and verb phrases. I'm going to invite you to watch a second video that goes into a bit more detail about verbs and verb phrases. And then I'm going to give you a quiz that covers mostly verb and verb phrases and will cover briefly some, uh, some technical terms as well. So, go to Google Classroom, you'll find a link to the other video, I will play it um, here in Google Meet.